Hi everybody, it's Olivia with the Wallace Marketing Group. I am a branding strategist and I work together with my husband, Sean, specifically for health, wellness, fitness, and nutrition coaches looking to grow their business through branding, sales, and marketing. Today I'm talking about how to prepare for a branded photo shoot. A lot of us are getting headshots done, it's the new year, and we want to update our look and freshen how we appear online and on social media, but I want to give you six things to make sure that you do as you prepare for your photo shoot. So you've done all of your research, you've hired the perfect photographer that you know gets you and understands your brand and who you're targeting. You've also hired a branding professional, a branding expert to help pull it all together in a strategic way. Now here are six things you need to do leading into your photo shoot. First one is to do some brand and category research. This is probably the number one thing that we fail to do prior to a photo shoot is actually research who is out there doing something similar and what do their shots look like. So we want to do this for a couple reasons. We want to know if you are a um, fitness coach, you want to go out and see what are the visuals and shots and things that people are doing that are other fitness coaches that are out there because you want to be up to par, right? You want their, your brand to be just as premium and high level as theirs, but you also want to be able to do things with regard to your brand and your photo shoot that someone else isn't necessarily doing. So in order to do that, in order to be unique, we have to know what's out there. This is number two, grab and pull together some visuals, collect your visuals and your images that will help inspire the mood, the tone, um, the um, angles, all of that for your uh, photo shoot. So a lot of times we'll call this a mood board, but we'll also call it um, a shot list as well. So what I like to do for my clients is to create a Pinterest board where I can put together all of the visuals and examples that set the mood and the tone. This includes the colors of the brand and the colors of what they're going to wear. But then I also pull together a visual shot list and these are actual pictures of angles and poses that I've seen on the internet that I want to mimic and kind of duplicate in my own way in my own style when you get uh, in front of the camera sometimes it can be a little intimidating and nerve-wracking to figure out like how how am I gonna pose and do I do this with my hand and what do I do with my my hands and so when you've seen somebody else do it and you like it a lot of times you can leverage that as example so collect your images for inspiration as well as your shot list the third thing is find the perfect location so what uh, a trend that I've been seeing and that I definitely push for is more of a habitat shot versus a head shot so Headshots are your standard where you're standing there, it's your face, the background is blurred, so ultimately it doesn't really matter where you shoot in a way if you're doing a standard headshot. But what we need to really express your brand and to set you apart is a habitat shot. These are shots of you doing what you do and doing what you love. So if you are a solopreneur, you maybe do all your work at coffee shops. And so maybe it's a picture of you sitting, having coffee, working on your laptop. If you're a fitness instructor, then you're gonna to wanna to be at a gym, either at your gym or find a gym that has really good lighting that you can take some pictures at. You're gonna to wanna to be in action, helping and coaching someone, training someone. So think about how can I take a picture in a location where when someone sees this photo, they get to know me, they understand who I am, they get a sense of my personality and what I do. So this has to go beyond the headshot. Location is key and I wanna make sure you source that location and scout it out. So actually go to it before you have your shoot. I've done this before where I'm like, this is the perfect location and I tell my photographer and my client to meet me there and then when I show up, it's not quite what I expected. So make sure you actually go and scout out those locations. The fourth thing you want to do is gather your props. So these are things like your laptop, for example, things like a journal or even your cell phone that you can use as a prop, depending on what you do. Again, because these are habitat shots, we want to get you in full action. Um, if you have a specific brand color, let's say your color is purple, make sure you find a purple mug that matches your brand color. Um, if you have, here's a really good tip, if you want to leverage your laptop um, and you have a kind of a broken beat down <laughs> laptop, then maybe borrow a friend's laptop or have your photographer bring theirs that can sub in really quick for you. The other thing is if you, let's say you have a bright red 
really fun, funky case on your laptop. Um, but your brand colors are not red necessarily and they're not like bright and crazy and funky like your case, make sure you pop that case off for your photos. So you want to be really super intentional about every single thing you do, making sure that you have props to express all of those things, even if it's a bouquet of fresh flowers. The fifth thing is determine your wardrobe and I actually don't recommend that you go out and do a bunch of shopping. A lot of times you can go into your closet and pick out some things that you know you look really really good in or things that people have complimented you in, colors that people compliment you in at all times. So go into your closet and find those things, find the, the things um, again that you feel good in but then also that complement your brand style, your brand personality, and your brand colors. Um, if you don't, let's say again, your brand color is purple, you don't own any purple, then I would go out and buy something, but you don't wanna buy something that you've never worn before, and then the day of your shoot, throw it on, and it just might not feel right, or it be a little bit awkward because you've never put it on before. The um, next thing, this is the sixth thing, is the prep the night before. So it's really important to prep the night before your photo shoot. Pack up all of your clothes so you have everything together, your jewelry, your makeup, everything that you need, put it together. Make sure that you have all your props gathered. Um, make sure that your nails are done. Um, if you are, let's say you're um, a wellness professional, you're a masseuse and you don't paint your nails, make sure that they are maybe buffed and that you're, you know, because you're going to show your hands, that you are considering what your hands and what your nails look like. I personally do not recommend that you hire a somebody to do your hair and makeup and, and here's the only reason why. And this is a, a kind of a horror story for lots of brides where they don't do a trial, they have someone do their hair and makeup for their wedding on the day of the wedding, just you know, moments before they walk down the aisle. And it's something so far out there because they want to be glamorous and look really good that it doesn't even look like them and it doesn't feel like them. That's happened to me before or I've had someone do my makeup and it just didn't feel or look like me. So if you feel like you might want a friend to help you, that's great, but don't go out and do too much because a lot of times we are unhappy with the photos because it's too over the top or because we've done something that doesn't feel genuine and doesn't look genuine and we want to come across as a genuine, unique brand. So hopefully those six tips helped you as you are planning your upcoming photo shoot. Please follow us and share this video for those that are entrepreneurs and people needing help with their brand. We appreciate you and we will talk to you soon.